to the ledger. So that's taking those same things and rewriting them, grouping them all together in the ledger. Yes, everybody? Yes. And after you post, what do you do? How come Dina's getting them all the right and you're just sitting there waiting for Dina to give all the right answers? Then what do you do? Trial balance. Prepare a trial balance. So I want to ask you, how many of you have seen a trial balance that's out of balance sometime in these two weeks? Admit it. Woo, a lot. So one of the strategies to today, one of the things I'd like to accomplish today is a strategy for finding your own mistakes. And in some of the lessons sometime, maybe we'll talk about correcting your own mistakes. Is it working, Maureen? Mm -hmm. Good. So let's talk about the homework that you might have turned in at the end of your row or in the Dropbox. Let's just play imagination for a second. What if the homework problem that you've submitted today has a trial balance that's in balance? What assurance do you have? I'm asking you to describe your confidence level as a percentage. What assurance do you have that that assignment will be returned to you marked check mark? I need three, four, or five people to say a percentage. One at a time so I can hear you. 90 percent, 95%. 100%. 75%. Anybody, somebody? 50. 50%. I wanted a representative sample of a wide group. Yesterday they were all kind of low. Typically, they're all kind of high. I thought that's where we were going for a second there. Um, <laughs> I'd like to spend a little bit of time with you, not much, but talk to me for a second about some kinds of mistakes that a trial balance won't catch. How many can we name, how fast can we name them? There are lots. Name me a kind of mistake that a trial balance won't catch. Who'll go first? Chris? I think you'll get the hang of it in a second. Dina. And wrong date? Yeah. Um, I think something, I was looking for something a, a little more substantial than uh, that. Uh -huh. Channel. If you spell a word wrong, it doesn't count. Yeah, a little so. more substantial than that, even. You, have we talked about spelling receivable correctly? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> have we talked about it? I'm going to instruct the graders to mark it, and if you keep misspelling it, I'm going to tell them to give you an NC on it. I do not want you on the job someday misspelling receivable and them ask you where you had accounting. <laughs> Did you hear me? It reflects on you. How do you spell receivable? Spell it. What's the rule? I before E, except after C, R, E, C, E, I, B, B, L, E. Okay, never mind. Here we moving on. Name me an, an error of substance that a trial balance won't catch. Well, wait, 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 I got a hand up. Sorry. I'm trying to remember. I'm sorry. Okay. It's destiny's on your right, and you are, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. I got you. Caitlin, that's Caitlin, your destiny. I got it, destiny, I cheated. Destiny. Um, say that a little bit louder. Something about debit or credit. Debit or credit. I'm not sure this is what you said, but let's see if this is an example. Let's say you paid the rent for $600 and you wrote it down as $60. Is that what you mean? So, no? Okay, you say yours a little louder. I didn't quite get it. Will it not catch debit or credit? Okay, so you made the entry wrong. Let, let, let's listen to this one. Let's see if this is it. So you paid the rent and you debited cash and credited rent expense. You made the entry backwards, and then you posted what you wrote down. Mm -hmm. The trial balance won't catch that. And that's what I'm talking about. There are three or four or five of these of substance, and I'll put you on the ultimate guilt trip. All the other classes name them. So I'm not letting you off the hook. I'd rather not name them for you. Think of something that a trial balance won't catch. May I have a volunteer? You're gonna try again? Yes. Okay, here we go. Okay, um, I like your example just fine. 
I'm going to stick with this one that I sort of started a minute ago. What if you paid the rent and you debited advertising expense and credited cash? The trial balance won't catch that. Or what if you debited rent expense and credited cash and when you get ready to post, you posted it to advertising expense accidentally? That's kind of like what you said. You're correct. A trial balance won't catch that. Name me a kind of mistake that a trial balance won't catch. Let's go faster. Babe? Yeah. Putting the wrong number. I think I said that one a minute ago when I thought I was giving an example for this one. You paid the rent for six hundred, but you wrote it down to sixty. A trial balance won't catch that. If both the numbers are sixty and you post them that way, a trial balance won't catch them. That do you know? Forgetting to report something. Leaving an entry out completely. Yeah. Assuming that the trial balance was in balance before that, you did nothing to change it, it's still going to be in balance. Now there's one that goes with that. Adding? Putting an entry in, posting it twice. So you paid the rent and wrote it down once, and you posted it, and you didn't put the numbers in, the posting reference notations like you should have. And somebody said, let's go get pizza. And you went with the group, came back to pick up right where you left off posting, and posted that one again. It's possible. Do you get the idea here? Mm -hmm. So I'm really appealing to the 100%, 99%, 95% people to try to get you to be not so confident. <coughs> Maybe you're a little overconfident about the work that you submitted at the end of your row or in the Dropbox. But maybe the people who were 30%, 50% or so need a little boost. Have you discovered the check figures at the end of the problem? Have you seen these marginal little <laughs> figures? So you work hard to get the trial balance to those totals, and then you look over at the check figure, what does that do to your confidence level? Shattered it? <laughs> that wasn't what it was supposed to be. You got that number. Now, what does that do to your confidence level? Yay. That ought to make you feel really good. That's the intent of that check figure. The other thing is to take it to lab and let the lab assistant review it. That, that boosts you considerably because they're comparing your work with the right answer that they've been provided. But that's not always available in real life. We've got to work to get our own check figures in real life to get it to work. Now, I'd like to summarize that by realizing what a trial balance really proves. Does it prove 100% accuracy? Does it guarantee you're going to get a check mark? Surely, in this last conversation we're attempting to have, you agree that it does not. Agree? What does a trial balance prove? Can you put it simply for me? What does a trial balance prove, Alex? Is that what you did put in? was correct. That sounds like everything from dates and misspelled words and account titles and amounts. What you did put in number wise, even if it even if you missed like a a, uh, a part of the balance, what you did put in was correct. I'm going to say that's a pretty close right answer, but it's not precisely the answer I'm looking for. And usually I've got some latitude in the way I want you to say this, but this time I'm looking for a fair for a fairly focused answer. Dina, you know, what does a trial balance prove? Because the credit and debit will be equal to each other. And that's all. It proves that debits and credits are equal. Is that a good thing to know? Yeah. It's a real good thing to know. Let's think a minute. Do you remember in the first lecture on Chapter 2, a week ago Monday, that I asked you to write explanations in 2-1-B? Mm -hmm. And we made a trade. If you would write explanations in 2-1-B, I was willing to forgive you from writing explanations the rest of the year. You're not writing explanations now, are you? No. no. Save time. Don't do that. Skip a line instead. Well, maybe it's time for us to make another deal. How about if a trial balance isn't all it's cracked up to be, if there's all these mistakes that a trial balance won't catch, how about we make a deal and Every time the textbook says, prepare a trial balance from here on, we'll just not make one. Skip that step, save time. Is that okay with everybody? 
I'm trying to get a consensus here. I got a pretty <laughs> overwhelming response. Any dissenters? Holdouts? Yes, but is your reasoning just to save time? Is that why we, we shouldn't do it? Wouldn't that be a good reason? Yes, yeah, but I was wondering if there's another reason. No, just to make you happy. <laughs> Increase my teacher evaluations at the end of the semester. <laughs> 100%. Assure that you'll enroll in my class in the spring. I'm okay with that, too. Do it? Yeah? Everybody? Mm -hmm. Last call. <laughs> Usually there's one holdout. Let's go over this one more time. Maybe I led you astray. Maybe the assumption was flawed. Maybe even though yours is in balance and you've got a check figure and you went to lab and you looked at it, maybe you misspelled receivable. I, no, 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 I'm not getting it down. I'm talking about just the debit credit mechanism. What assurance do we have that when trial balance totals are in balance, Dina says that's proof that debits and credits are equal. So let's change the whole story just for a second. What if the problem at the end of the row, the problem in the drop box, has a trial balance that's out of balance? Mm -hmm. What assurance do you have that when that problem is returned to you, it's going to be marked NC? 100%. That should be 100%. I'm trying to get you to see that maybe you've overestimated the value of a trial balance, even to the point of tricking you into saying, let's do away with it. If you do away with the trial balance, how are you gonna know that you're out of balance? Mm -hmm. Do you see my point? Mm -hmm. Even though this isn't a 100% guarantee, it's sure reassuring to know that you're in balance. Even with its flaw, it's nice to know that we're in balance. We have permission to continue. We're sort of right to that point, no deal. I think we ought to do trial balances. Yeah. And I think you ought to agree that we ought to do trial balances. We want to know. We have to look for ways to check our own work, and this is a good one. I'd like to talk about trial balances more with you by working exercise 213. It's on page 84, and I'm inviting you to turn there. There's some good stuff at the end, so I'm hoping that you'll allow me to help you catch on at the beginning so that we can get to the good stuff. So read with me. Our bookkeeper made a number of errors in journalizing and posting as described below. Six items listed there. We'll read them in a few minutes. Instructions. For each error, indicate whether the trial balance will balance. If the trial balance won't balance, indicate the amount of the difference. Indicate the trial balance column that would have the larger total. And then after that, it suggests that we use a format similar to this one to describe how we're doing it. Now, to make my points, I'm going to do this out of order. And if you daydream for a second and want to refocus and wonder where we are, I'm going to try to always show you which one we're doing because we're doing it out of order. And I'd like to start with item three. Let's read three. A collection from a customer of $100. Do you understand what that said? Can you tell me what's going on here? They received $100. And here's why. In payment of the amount the customer owed us. A collection from a customer for $100 in payment of its account owed was journalized and posted as a debit to cash of $100 and a credit to service revenue of $100. That seems a bit overwhelming. So let's talk about it. Let's compare what was recorded, the statement of fact, with what should have been recorded what you would have done, let's start here. Forget what it says. What would you have done had you recorded a collection on account from a customer? I need a volunteer, let's go faster, Gina. Debit, cash, and credit uh, accounts receivable. Is correct, thank you. And I think it was $100, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I need a new volunteer to help me read this and tell me what they did. Find the statement of fact. It says, was recorded as, Alex, what does it say? Uh, it said that it was recorded as a uh, service revenue for $100. And was that a debit or a credit? That was a credit. Service revenue was credited. <laughs> right. And cash was debited. Thank you. So class, did they do anything right? Yes. Um, yeah. Did they do anything right? Number wise, yeah. Cash. What did they do right? Yeah. Debit and cash. They debited cash correctly. And what did they do wrong? 
service revenue. Service revenue. So they were trying to decrease accounts receivable and they increase service revenue. Yes? Yes. Will the trial balance balance? Now, I need every one of you to decide. I'm going to ask some of you. But in a minute, we're going to do a show of hands, so I'm going to ask every one of you. You need to make up your mind and be willing to give me a vote. Will the trial balance balance, yes or no? How about just three or four or five volunteers? <laughs> Tell me what you think, Judah. Yes. Yes, yes. with confidence. <laughs> Morgan. Yes. Yes. Will the trial balance balance, Alex? Yes. Yes. Chandler? Yes. I wish you'd have been here yesterday. I never know how this is going to turn out. Yesterday, in two discussions, it was no, yes, yes, no, yes, no. We were tied the whole way through. <laughs> and sometimes when it starts off like this, now nobody has the nerve to say no. Let me repeat this. You were trying to decrease accounts receivable and you increased service revenue. Let's do show of hands. Will the trial balance balance? Yes. Will the trial balance balance? No. Okay, tell the truth. You didn't vote. Hands up. Come on. I know some of you didn't. I need you to vote when we're doing this. It was about two-thirds, one-third in favor of yes. Let me help you out a little bit. Will the trial balance balance? Yes. Here's the crux of the issue. You wanted to have a debit and a credit that equaled for $100, and you had a debit and a credit that equaled for $100. The account names don't really matter. What matters is the amounts. Remember, a trial balance proves that debits and credits are equal. Yes, in this case. Even that trick I tried to pull over your eyes that you didn't fall for. <laughs> the trial balance will balance. Now, these get progressively more difficult. We're going to turn up the heat a little bit, and you need to understand every step of the way. If you don't understand as we're going along, you need to ask me right then so I can help you out. Are you with me? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Judah. Um, your trick was that you were saying... About the effect on the account, about how one we were trying to decrease one account and we really increased another, and that really doesn't matter. Because one of them is like... The, the natural form. I yeah, forget normal. Yeah, yeah, normal that, balance it is of true, the account. It is true that that happened, but that's not what a trial balance proves. Yeah, yeah. A trial balance only proves that we've got a debit and a credit that, that equal. Let's go. Let's try two. Mm -hmm. Two says, a debit posting of 750 for prepaid insurance was debited to insurance expense. I'm going to read that again in a second, and I'm going to read it out of the amplified version. <laughs> <laughs> My book's just like your book. There happens to be some in invisible ink in my book, and it might be in your book too. I need you to go along with this. I, I'm trying to get you to see <clears throat> what you might call an assumption. I think there's a little difference between an assumption and an inference. My plan is to draw an inference here. I think an inference is just a little bit stronger than an assumption. I think under an assumption you make up more. And an inference, you base it a little more on some other fact or hint that might be present. So read this one again with me, literally. Eyes on your book. Don't take them off until I'm finished reading this. Stay with me here. Two says, a debit posting of 750 for prepaid insurance was debited to insurance expense semicolon. The credit was posted correctly. Any invisible ink in your book? Mm -hmm. How do I know that it says that? Because they didn't mention it. Mm -hmm. This problem was set up to tell us all the mistakes they made. So the inference I'm drawing is if they didn't mention it, it must have been right. Are you with me or not? Yep. By not mentioning it, it must have been right. So read it again. Two. A debit posting of 750 for prepaid insurance was debited to insurance expense. The credit was posted correctly. Agree or done? Yes. yes. Now, I'm begging you to make your own decision again. Will the trial balance balance? Mm -hmm. Made up your mind? The trial balance will balance. Yes. 
The trial balance won't balance. Hands up. Some of you are not voting. That was a little 50-50. A debit posting was posted as a debit. A credit was posted as a credit. It's going to balance. There's nothing there that's going to cause this to not be in balance. And if you don't see that yet, please ask me right this minute. What's the error? There's not one. Oh, okay, there is one. They debited it to prepaid insurance. Oh. Sorry, they intended to debit to prepaid insurance, and they debited to insurance expense. Oh. One's an asset, one's an expense, okay. okay? But they put it in the right account. But remember, <coughs> accounts don't matter. Yeah. It's amounts that matter. And really, it says a debit was posted as a debit, and a credit was posted as a credit. Are you with me? Yes. Thank you. Let's do another. One. One says, a credit posting of 525 to accounts receivable was omitted, semicolon. Who's willing to read me the invisible ink in your book? Chris. The debit was posted correctly. Doesn't it say that in your book? It needs to. One more time. A credit to accounts receivable was omitted. The credit was posted correctly. We're going to vote. The trial balance will balance. Yes. The trial balance will not balance. I think you're getting it. Somebody explain to me why the trial balance won't balance. Who's my volunteer? Dina. They took out a credit, but they left the debit. It says a debit. What are we doing? One? The debit was posted. It says an invisible ink. The credit was not posted. Yes? Yeah. Dina, what's the difference going to be? We're going to be off by $525. Which total is going to be larger? We posted the debit. We didn't post the credit. The debit total is going to be larger. Alex? be just repeating what you just said, but because because it says that the credit posting was omitted, it, it's saying that they didn't post it, they like removed the credit, and so because there's a debit there, it won't balance. It. That's correct. They posted the debit, but not the credit. Yes? yes. Do I have it right? Yes. Okay. Now when we get to this point, and we have some that are out of balance, there are some tips in helping you find your last mistake. If you've got many mistakes that are interacting with each other, these tips that I'm about to give are not going to work. When you're down to your last mistake, that's usually the hardest one to find. You're, you're tired of looking for them now. All right? Yes. It's really hard to find the last one. Here's some tips that you might use to help you find that last mistake. My suggestion is that you find the totals and write them down. And for every one of these suggestions, I've got a little graphic to try to get you to see what I'm talking about. So on your trial balance, you've got two columns of numbers. And you learned in math a long time ago, if you wanted to sum that column, you draw a line. So I've got a single line depicting I'm ready to add this up. And when I added all these up, I got that fake number. And when I added all these up, I got that fake number. And what I'm trying to get you to see is they're not the same. Do you see my picture? Mm -hmm. I've helped a lot of students over the years, some on the phone. And they'll call me and say, Could, my trial balance doesn't balance, can you help me out? Sure. What'd you get for your debit? Oh, I don't, I, don't, I didn't write it down. Okay, what'd you get for your credit? Oh, I didn't write that either. I don't know why over the years we've not wanted to write it down. I guess they thought we'd erase it too many times and rub a hole in the paper. Well, with you doing it electronically, that doesn't matter. If you're using Excel, or if you're writing it by hand, then put it down a few squares from there and write it there until you get it right, and then put it in the square you want it to be correctly, okay? But for Pete's sake, write it down. Give us something to work with. Then find the difference in these two numbers and look for that amount. So let's look for this one. How much were we off, Dina? By 525. So I'm going to pretend that here's my journal, and I'm not going to look at the accounts because, remember, the accounts don't matter. I'm going to focus on just the two amount columns. And I'm going to look down through this until I, oh, here's an entry for 525. Maybe this was it. Let's see. That debit was posted <laughs> mm -hmm, right there. That credit was, <laughs> I don't see that anywhere. 
Go with me here? Yep. There you go. You found it right there. Look with me at 4. A credit posting of 415 to property tax payable was made twice, semicolon. Complete that thought. Who's willing? Betsy. The debit was correct. How many times? Once. The debit was posted once. But the credit was twice. The credit was posted twice. I'm asking all of you. Will the trial balance balance? Yes. Will the trial balance balance? No. Have we accomplished something today? Yes. Did you look around the room at what just happened? Will the trial balance balance say it? No. 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 I need one person to tell me how much you're going to be off. How, how much, Alex? Um, 415. 415? Yes. Consensus? Yes. 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 Alex, which total is going to be larger? Credit. Because you posted it twice. You posted the credit twice? Yes. Agree, everybody? Yes. yes. Okay. So here's some tips. When you're down to your last mistake, what you should do is find the totals and write them down. And find the difference in those two totals and look for that number. Let's try that one more time, but I gotta get my head on straight. What number am I doing? Four. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna look down this amount column in my journal until I, oh, here's one. So here's that debit mm -hmm. and this credit. Dang it! I can't believe I did that! Stupid. <laughs> Go with me or not? Yeah. yeah. There it is. <laughs> right there in front of you. Look with me at one I made up, similar to the one we just did. I changed it just a little. A credit of 400 to accounts payable was posted as a debit semicolon. Finish this thought. A volunteer hand up quickly. What's the rest of this infer? You know how to do this by now. Dina? Credit was a credit was posted as a debit. What's the rest of this say? The debit was posted correctly. Yes or no? Yes. Have you made up your mind yet? <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause two seconds and then we're going to vote. I want to know if the trial balance will balance. Don't say anything. The trial balance will balance, yes. The trial balance will not balance, hands up. We're making some progress. The trial, the, the trial balance will be out of balance. It will not balance. It will be off how much? I need some volunteers. Judah? 400. Chandler? 400. Somebody? 400. Somebody? 400. Somebody? 800. Alex? Uh, Asia? Didn't hear you? 400. Judah? 800. It's either 400 or 800. Let me help you. Let me help you. Okay? So, we're going to have two made up accounts. Be with me. I'm not going to name them. Do names of accounts matter? No. no. Doesn't matter. It says a credit of 400. I was trying to do this, and I did this incorrectly. It says that. And then the inference in invisible ink says the debit was posted correctly. Now, you didn't have trouble with will the trial balance balance, but it's pretty obvious you were still struggling with that, isn't it? This is two debits. The trial balance is not going to balance. Now, if you're still having trouble with the amount, tune in. Let's try to correct this. Now, some of you would just delete that number and put it where it goes. But in the old days, we wrote these by hand and we wrote them in ink. So it literally took an entry to correct it. We'd have to make another journal entry to correct it. So we would post, let's just experiment. Does this take care of the problem? Yes. Yes. Now is the trial balance in balance? Yes. yes. It is not. No. That just offset this one I'm back to zero here, and I've still got a debit over here with no, nothing to offset. <laughs> so I've got to post the original credit mm -hmm. now. It took $800 of correction to get me where I wanted to be. Are you with me right this minute? Mm -hmm. Now, this one's 
like the previous one, but better <laughs> to get you to think. And here's the rule that you can apply to this situation. A debit posted as a credit or a credit posted as a debit will cause you to be twice as much off. You really made two mistakes. Now let's think about it one more time. You made one mistake not posting that as a credit. If you just left it out, you would have been 400 off. But no, you had to go one step further and post it as a debit and really mess things up. Are you with me? Yeah. Somebody's hand was up. I think it was Alex that I saw first. Alex? When you had to correct it like that, did you get in trouble? No. You know, there was what, you, what would have happened would, if you had erased this or something and left a big smudge there in the old days in ink, you might have gotten in trouble. What, what we didn't want to do in those days was do anything to bring, cause suspicion, to bring suspicion to ourselves. So that's why we would either mark it out with one line and correct it or make another entry. Dinga, your hand was up. Um, when you corrected, could you have just done one entry for 800? Yes, like yes, but you wouldn't have seen it as much. Okay. Okay, now. Let's see, if, uh, the difference is, have we decided on a number here? 800. 800. And which total is going to be larger? The debit. the debit total was larger because there were two debits there and no credits. Yes? yes. So the debit's going to be larger. So I've got a tip for you. When you're down to your last mistake, what you should do is find the totals and write them down. And find the difference and look for that number. So how much were we off? 800. So I looked through all these entries. There's not one for 800. So now you go to the next step. You divide the difference by 2. And if it comes out even, and I don't mean 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 even, I mean a whole number. No trailing decimals. If it comes out even, then look for that number. So tell me again, how much were we off? Eight hundred. Is that evenly divisible by two? Yes. What'd you get? Four hundred. Ah. So I'm going to scan these entries until I find me an entry for four. Here's one for four hundred dollars. Watch me trace these. So here's the debit that I'm tracing to this posting in the account. There it is. Good. Now this credit in the journal was po. Oh my gosh. Oh, oops. oh, that makes me mad. Are you with me or not? Yes. yes. It works. This is a good tip when you're down to your last mistake. Look at six with me. A debit of 475 to advertising expense was posted as 457 semicolon. Finish that thought quickly. The credit was posted correctly. <laughs> The, pre the credit was posted as what number? 475. A debit of 475 was posted as 457. The credit was posted correctly as 475. If you're with me right this minute, say yes. yes. Will the trial balance balance? Everybody said no. How much are you going to be off one volunteer? Evan, $22 has been suggested. I don't think that's it. I didn't do the math. $18 has been suggested. How much? Eighteen dollars. Yes, it's okay. Are you with me or not? Yes. Which total will be larger? The credit. the credit total will be larger. There's a name for this kind of mistake. I learned it in high school typing. Anybody know the name of this kind of mistake? What's this called? Syntax error. No. What's the name of this kind of mistake? Somebody writing letters in the wrong order. R e c I E B A B L E, or <coughs> writing digits in the wrong order. No, somebody here knows this. And when I say it, you're going to say, "Oh, I knew that." It's always better when I can get it out of you. This is called a transposition. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it's called a transposition, and they typically happen when you're tired, which means you're looking for them when you're tired, and they're hard to find. I got a tip for you. You ought to find the totals and write them down and find the difference and look for that number. And if you didn't find that, then divide by two and look for that number. And if you didn't find it, then take that difference and divide by nine. Transpositions in 
places, I'm talking about mathematical places, side by side, will always cause you to be off an amount evenly divisible by nine. It's just this mathematical wonder of the world. If I had time, I would take your birthdays and one, or two or three or four is a demonstration, and I would convert your birthday to numbers. And I'd make up another one right below it, reversing one of the places. We'd find the difference, and every time, I will guarantee you, every time, it'll be off an amount easily, evenly divisible by nine. If you're Thomas and doubting, you come see me, and we'll do it individually, and I'll prove it to you. You ought to experiment with it on your own. I'd rather finish the lesson than prove it right this minute. Okay? Now, transpositions are hard to find. So this is just a tip. All the other times it said look for that number. This one's not look for that number. It, it, it might be. Notice the word. It might be a transposition. You've got to go through back through all your work. The best advice is start your work early enough that you, if you have one of these, can put it aside and let somebody else look at it, perhaps. Or you look at it when your eyes are not so tight. One more. Five. Two more, maybe. A cash purchase of supplies for 250 was journalized and posted as a debit to supplies of 25 and a credit to cash of 25. Have you made up your mind? Have you made up your mind? Yes or no? Yes. Will the trial balance balance? No. Let's do show of hands. Will the trial balance balance? Yes. Will the trial balance balance? No. I think the trial balance is going to balance. What? I think a lot of you fell for this. We need to read this one one more time. Oh. Five says, a cash purchase for 250 was journalized as a debit of 25 and a credit of 25. What's wrong with that? Yeah. A debit of 25 and a credit of 25. <laughs> Must we vote again? No. <laughs> yes or no? no? Are you with me? Yes. Now, unfortunately, that one's not as tough as it should be. So let's do one <laughs> similar to this. Use this as the inspiration, but modify it a bit. Hang with me here. A cash purchase of supplies for 250 was journalized and posted as a 250 debit and a credit of 25. Will the trial balance balance? No. 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 Which? Um, how much are we going to be off? Uh, 225. Yes. 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 Yeah. 225. Which <coughs> column is going to be larger? Debit. debit. The debit total is going to be larger. There's a name for this kind of mistake. And I bet you don't know it. You should have known transposition. This is called a slide. And slides mean that you put too many or too few zeros. It usually happens in numbers with a lot of zeros, like 100,000 that you would write as 10,000, or a million that you'd write as 100,000. You with me here? Yes. A lot of zeros, and you put too many or too few. It's called a slide misplacing the decimal place. And the steps are the same. If you haven't found it by this point, then divide by nine. If it's evenly divisible by nine, it might be a transposition or it might be a slide. The trouble with slides and transpositions is that you don't know which occurred and they happen when you're tired. <coughs> Therefore, you're looking for them when, they're when you're tired. They're hard to find. It's just this mathematical wonder. You ought to try one. Take a whole bunch of numbers. A number, 363,000, and then 3,630,000. Find the difference, divide by nine. Slides and transpositions will always be, the amount of the difference will always be evenly divisible by nine. Got a question? Did you learn something today? Yes. Have a nice day and a nice week.